Hello and welcome to chapter 10 in this series of tutorials for Excel beginners. In the last tutorial we looked at creating this chart that you can see on the screen, this column chart. What I want to do is show you a couple of things just to uh, uh, give you a bit more information on uh, creating your charts and one of the things that's useful is how to update it. For example if somebody adds a new row of data to your spreadsheet how do you get your chart to actually see the new row of data? Uh, and to show you how to do that, I'm going to add a row onto the spreadsheet first of all. So if we just zoom back in, I'm going to use a zoom tool there to zoom back to 100% on the spreadsheet. And I'm going to add a, a row first of all. And to do that, all I need to do, I can do it quite quickly, is click where I want the new row to appear. So I can click anywhere on this row at all. It doesn't really matter, so I'm going to click in A9. Go to the Insert menu and simply click on Rows and it's put a new row in there. There is another way you can do it which is simply to put your mouse pointer over the number 9 in this case right click and then choose insert and that would add a row in. That's added another row there so I'm going to delete that one because I don't want two rows so we'll get rid of that and I'm going to add a new movie title and some rental information so the title I'm going to put in here is Rear Window an Alfred Hitchcock classic, in case you're not familiar with it. And I'm going to copy the rental price from the row above. And to do that, a nice quick way of doing it is a keyboard shortcut. Hold down the control key and press the apostrophe key. And that copies the information from the cell above. Tab across. And I'm going to put the number 18 for the number of rentals. Tab across again. And I want to copy the formula from the cell above. And this time I'm going to click in the formula itself in row row 8. Put my mouse pointer over the bottom right there so I've got the little autofill uh, mouse pointer appearing and then just drag down one row and that puts the calculation into row 9 for me. Gives me the result £15.60. Okay that's that part done. So if we just scroll down here we'll see the chart and at the moment as you see the chart ends with the Wizard of Oz. It doesn't have a rear window on at the moment. And what I'm going to do here is show you what happens when I click on the chart itself. You may well have already seen this anyway. Puts, and I'll just scroll back up so you can see. What it does, it puts these blue boxes around the areas of information that are included in the chart. So there's a box around the titles, and there's a box around the rentals column, which includes the column label and the actual values there. Now, as you see, that these boxes end at the Wizard of Oz, and we don't want that. We want it to include the rear window. So all I need to do here to update the chart, and if again just scroll down a wee bit there, you can see the chart itself as it updates. I'm going to put the mouse pointer over the bottom right of that blue boundary box. So we get again the fill handle, drag down one row, and that updates the chart. Now immediately you see there's a slight problem there, that the formatting has gone astray. Um, it's resized the font again in order to fit this new column in. To correct that, all I need to do is click on that row of titles, the, the title category if you like, the category uh, labels. So just click on that and then I'm going to change the font size down. Now it's already set at 8. I'm going to actually highlight the font number because if I actually click the drop down arrow you'll see there's no nothing below 8 but you can enter a number below 8 just manually. And I'm going to enter the number 7 so it's type 7, press enter and there we go that has updated my chart and it's correct to the formatting. Obviously the, the text is a bit smaller now so it's a little bit harder to read perhaps but when you print it it'll still be perfectly okay and on screen it's, it's perfectly fine as well. So there we go, that's how to update the chart. The next thing I'm going to do is just show you how to move the chart. Now I'm going to uh, later on this tutorial just create a simple pie chart and before I do that I'm going to move this chart out of the way and to do that all I need to do is right click on the chart on the little mini menu that pops up, the shortcut menu, go to location and that gives me the option as you can see as object in sheet 1 which is where it already is and the other option is as new sheet so it's going to create a new spreadsheet within this workbook uh, it's going to call it chart 3 because I've done a few other ones as well so I just click as new sheet, I can give it any label I want, I'm, I'm going to call it um, I'll call it rentals actually, call it rentals column chart, there we go, so give it a, a sensible name, click OK 
and what's happened there is it's now moved the charity information onto its very own sheet and it's called, as you can see on the sheet tab there, rentals column chart. Sheet 1 is where our original data is and if I click on sheet 1, the sheet 1 tab, there we go, we're back to the original spreadsheet. And so what we have now in this workbook, we have sheet 1 which has got our, our main data and we have another tab there, another worksheet which has got the chart. Okay. I can always move that chart back to the main sheet later on, but just for now I want it out of the way on a sheet by itself and that's all done. Okay. So we'll click back on sheet one. Um, the next stage in this process is to create a pie chart. Unfortunately I'm going to run out of time on this YouTube clip, so I'll save the creation of the pie chart for the next video. So thank you for watching this video. I uh, hope you found something useful there and see you next time.